evening, everybody. How you doing? Welcome to From My Mother's Basement, the show that celebrates being a geek. I'm Jason. And I am Michael. And uh, it's been... Uh, Quite a week. Yes, definitely. Um, <laughs> yeah, especially because I'm just getting back from uh, from Big Bear. So Yeah, yeah. How, how, I saw the picture you posted on Facebook. How was that? <laughs> yeah, it was fun. We just hung out with some friends. They had a cabin up there. We just had to go up there for overnight. Um, now, the thing is... In your shorts and flip-flops. Yeah, of course. Regardless of where I'm at, I don't care if it's the equator. I don't care if it's the North Pole. Shorts and flip flops are always uh, acceptable attire for me. So you know, so it's like, and the thing is, it wasn't really you and Kevin Smith. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, I just need a, I just need the jersey, and I'll be just Kevin the jersey. Smith. Yeah, that's right. We'll get you your own. <laughs> we'll, but just don't go orange and blue, or you'll be copying him. Go with some other yeah. game. Well, you know, I, I might get sued for you know, infringement or something like that. Which <laughs> side note, um, the you heard about the whole Dead Mouse versus um, uh, Disney bit, right? Loosely, yeah. About how they, he, uh, Dead Mouse tried to trademark his uh, his helmet, his his mouse ears, and what. Right, right. And Disney were like, "Nope," and they filed like a hundred and seventy seven page lawsuit or something like that. Uh huh. Um, the result came back. Disney it lost completely in Disney's favor. Seriously, so bad to the point that Dead Mouse can no longer use the helmet, the ears. Um, he can't use it for stage. He can't use it for artwork. He can't use it for anything. It's gone. Oh, that's bullshit yeah i was like come on really oh my god everybody can... just, he's not calling himself mickey it doesn't look like mickey not even by a long shot but... oh man wow yeah okay. you kind of roll the dice when you take on the court especially if you got disney's okay. and he was lawyers, almost taunting still... them too it was like he was on twitter showing their all their um their paperwork the uh, the lawsuit stuff. And he basically tells him, "Lawyer up," because he's going after him, and unfortunately, he lost. But this is not the end of it. He's going to keep on going into it. So good. But, Appeal that crap. Yeah, I was like, God <clears throat> damn, when I heard. I mean, that. not saying saying that he can't do. You know, saying that he can't use Disney's likeness, you know, or mouse image is mm. fine. But he's not running Mickey. No, not at all. It's uh... yeah, it okay. <laughs> so hopefully he will. You know, the appeal will go through and things maybe. Disney, change. I love you, but you're idiots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, very much so. Um, uh... But yeah, me walk going to Big Bar, Big Bear, and me walking around Big in like Big Bar. It, I can't speak right now. I'm still stuffed up beyond belief. And going up to eight thousand feet elevation probably wasn't the smartest for me. To, the but you know what? Fun, it was though. still a ton of fun. Walked okay. around, had some great beers. We brought back the the best of the um, uh, souvenirs you can always bring back from a trip: beer. Because <laughs> there's so many breweries up there. They're like. You can buy a growler, which is basically a large glass of jug for like 20 bucks. Fill it up with whatever beer you want. You can take it home. I'm like, awesome. Wow. <laughs> I was, I, it, it was nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, I came back watching football and whatnot. What about you, Michael? What have you been up to? Uh, well, um, I managed to resurrect my MacBook. Um, that's a, which makes me happy. Yes, it's a very good and also very surprising bit. Well, yeah, because I thought, I mean, all the indications were that it's, now the backlit on the keyboard's still dead. Oh, my God. I can't, I, I, I don't oh, know no. what I'm going to do. i got to throw this thing in the ocean now. But, <laughs> I mean, please. I, I can live without the backlight. <coughs> but, you know, that's what started this whole mess, if you remember. I do. Uh, um, but the, uh, so yeah, it turned out that it wasn't pregnant battery. It turned out that the battery's fine. It looks good. It, uh, it was the hard drive, so I've my by hand replaced it. I'm not about to pay those vultures for the to you know 200 <laughs> bucks to swap out a freaking hard drive. Um, that being said, I've also determined that as much as I love Mac and Apple products, mm-hmm. I'm not a Mac person. I walked, I went to the Apple store in Thousand Oaks. Wow, you went um, to one of their genius bars. Well, the genius, they're. they're <laughs> They're all wearing, you know, they're, they're little red shirts with the apple uh, tattooed on the in the chest, you know, like they're trying to be Iron Man or some shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 they had a variety, you know, points for having a variety of people. Of course, you know, Apple's kind of a hippie company in that regard, which I'm cool with. Mm-hmm. But I felt so out of place when everybody's sitting there with, you know, their iPads and their iPhones. And they're getting the computer. I'm sitting here with my little MacBook and my Sony Xperia texting. <laughs> I'm the only one, you know, and there's just like this whole thing. I could just feel every eye in the room going. <laughs> the minute I whipped out this little phone, I'm like, sorry. You know? <laughs> um, how dare you? Was, you know, the heathen who def- brought in non-Apple technology. Yeah, how dare you defile our location? <laughs> yeah, exactly. How dare you defile us with Sony? Um, but otherwise, uh, so I did that. 
And um, uses a segue into our first item. Got a rather unexpected surprise this week. Um, I got an email on Thursday from Blizzard saying, hey, we've sent you something. And, of course, my first instinct is, okay, this is some sort of phishing scam. What the hell? Except that they listed my full name, listed the address they were shipping it to, and gave a UPS tracking number. So I'm like, okay, what the hell's this? So I go to UPS, paste in the tracking number. It's a valid tracking number, and it was set for delivery the day I got the email. I'm like, okay, what the hell? Oh, and it weighed seven pounds. And I'm like, what the F are they saying? I mean, is this like an art <laughs> book commemorating the 10th anniversary? What's going on? No, it was this. This okay. is a miniature version of the uh, the orc statue that Blizzard has in the uh, entryway to their to their campus in Irvine. So what they did is as a way of saying thank you to all of their 10-year uh, players who have had a the, the the you have to have been from what I can tell you have to have been signed up for the game within sixty days of launch, which I was. I was like three weeks, and you have to have had a consistent account, nonstop, from that point to present, which I have. So I was both impressed, kind of happy, and I'll be honest, slightly embarrassed. Um, it's like really Wait, why embarrassed? For Ten years. <laughs> But you also have to think about you've been enjoying this game for ten years, and this is yeah, a, I have. This is a very cool way for them to you know yeah, exactly, out. and it is exactly. I mean, I got that. I'm going, hey, this is freaking cool. I mean, you saw me post it on Facebook within like you know twenty minutes of having it, mm -hmm. um, and I saw so it's just kind of blown away by it. And I thought it was mm -hmm. really cool and a very nice thing for them to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Somebody was talking about, I was uh, reading some comments on some other things that were talking about it. And they're like, you know, somebody said, well, you've spent $1,800 over this over the last 10 years. I'm like, yeah, think about it. $1,800 over 10 years. You guys probably spend more than that on junk food. <laughs> exactly. I mean, $1,800 for 10 years of entertainment. <laughs> I'm okay with that. But it was also the fact that you didn't actually spend eighteen hundred dollars. You spent less than that. I ended up spending less because I go for the six month version. Right. But it. Wow. No, it's just it's a really cool it's a really cool, um, it's a really cool statue, and it was a really cool thing of them to do. And Blizzard, thank you. I'm I'm really pleased with it. Mm. So yeah, and apparently they're going for four hundred dollars on eBay already. <laughs> Jeez. But the, I'm not selling mine. I was going to say, there's no reason to sell this kind of thing. I mean, it, there are people who do people. I mean, you know, it's, you know, they're probably Chinese gold farmers. Yeah, Hopefully yeah, they limited, they filtered out the Chinese gold farmers who've had accounts. For exactly. Years. I wonder if it's one of those situations because you got to think that if you put this much time and effort into something like this and you get something like this in return, unexpectedly you kind of yeah. want to keep it it's kind of a cool thing yeah it's kind of like a you know it's a badge of honor if you will sorry my eyes are burning for some reason <sighs> and, and they're good with blocking all the the uh, the gold farmers it's, it's just like when you go to like a like a celebrity signing you will always find some of those people in the front that have a um like um, a stroller but there's no kid in it. it's just a bunch of stuff that they want the celebrity to sign right exactly so they can go sell it on ebay and i'm like really come on yeah well that's why like when i go get autographs you know, a lot of a lot of them will just say, you know, da da da, da and I'll be I'll be like, I'm one of those people that I'm like, no, go ahead and put it to me because I'm buying it for me. Exactly. You know, it's it's I. It was really fun when I got the I got this one uh, Boba Fett poster for my son from an artist, and had it signed it to my son, and <laughs> my son's name is spelled rather oddly, and he just he figured it's like, you want me to spell what? <laughs> like, here, let me write it down for you. Here. Ah. <laughs> you know? uh. Oh well, but I mean that's cool. I'm I'm glad you actually picked, uh, got something like that. That's actually I I don't have anything close to something nice like that. So. <laughs> I I was just like wow, blown away. Um, yeah, that is was very, very cool. cool. Though. And it was a very nice thing that Blizzard did that they didn't have to do. Hmm, very true. But again, Blizzard's always been known to try to take care of their. Uh, they're veterans, I guess we call it. The players who've played for. They've been, they've, they've been really good about years. taking care of their players in general. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to, I mean, yeah, okay, they've stumbled at a couple points, but here and there, a little bits. But 
when it comes to companies that listen to their user base, mm-hmm. take care of their user base, and and you want to talk about a company that's doing it right, even with their minor stumbling blocks <laughs> here and there, uh-huh. Blizzard's the gold standard. They are, yes. So, well, more I have, power to them. True. Well, I know that the Oscar nominations came out, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, but I wanted to get some really cool tech that, Michael, I know both you and I have been looking at this since day one it was announced. <laughs> uh, we're talking about Project Ada, which is Google's uh, modular smartphone pr- uh, program. Yes. Um, they've had a couple different prototypes out, and they've shown some other stuff uh, in over the years. Um, very recently, they showcased their latest prototype, which is what they're calling Spiral 2, and we'll probably get more information at the Mobile World Conference, which is going to be in Barcelona, Spain, later on this year. But um, this thing looks amazing. Now, let me give you the basics for it. So, you know you, ha- you always have your smartphone. You might want to change something on it. Maybe it was a... Um, uh, maybe, maybe you've got a 10 megapixel camera and they've released a, and there's a new one that comes out that's got a 15 or 20 megapixel camera and exactly size of camera pixelation is a big deal to you so with this situation you just slide yep. off the little thing the camera's its own little module mm-hmm. just slide it out get the new one slide it in exactly. and it auto configures now the base design of it is this right here this is the the, the back half of it um, this is a simple metal frame. You have those connectors for all the different parts. Um, they're actually held in place uh, with magnets. And then, of course, on the front, you have spot for two designs. Now, like I said, like Michael said, you can swap any parts you want in here. You want a better, better camera? Throw it in there. You want to have more memory? You can do that. If you want to take away some memory in, ex- in exchange for uh, two batteries, you can do that as well. Uh, speaker phones, um, 3G to LTE. You can do all of that. It is amazing what you can do with this. Mm-hmm. You could even have, if you're of uh, the this selfie crowd and you want to have the front-facing camera as uh, high quality as the rear-facing camera, you can do that as well. Uh, you want that 720p screen and change it to a 1080p? You can do that. So it's literally it's it's an a la carte phone. You can do you can uh, and you don't even necessarily have to have it as a phone. No, I mean you, there's there's. You, you can literally make this to be whatever you want it to be. And that's, you know, I'd love to see a tablet built that way. Oh, man, that'd be amazing. That would be kind of awesome. Now, here's a crazy thing that I'm really excited for is the fact that this project is actually getting released publicly, kind of. Um, it is going to be released initially uh, as a market pilot program in Puerto Rico, of all places, <laughs> the second half. Seriously, of, they're launching it in Puerto Rico? They're launching a project uh, in second half of 2015. Wow. Now, that's just, it's a market pilot. You, you test it to see how people think about it, and then they can tweak it, and then, because I know the Spiral 3 they're talking about will actually have abilities like 4G LTE um, and support up to, like, 30 different modules. Um, one thing that I like about this so far is that if you wanted to swap out the parts well say if you want to swap out a dying battery well how are you going to keep the phone running at that point they say they have some tweaks on the internal side that allows you to swap out parts within a 30 second interval while keeping the phone still powered so you can still swap out batteries while the thing's uh, on in theory do they do they also do it in such a way that okay say i've got you know, I'm say I'm doing the the, the mega, twenty megapixel camera thing, mm-hmm. or say I want to put two cameras in there and do some and fake some three D, mm-hmm. which theoretically is possible. I don't know if they would do this <coughs> on this phone, mm-hmm. but you know, can I do that on the fly? Just flop swap it out, going you know, hey, I don't want, I don't need this module right now. I'll pop it out, put it in a little protective case that's put in my pocket, pop that, in a new one. Can you hot swap this stuff? Is that's what, what I'm they're asking. basically saying, yeah. I mean, as long as you can swap it out within, like, 30 seconds, yes, it'll recognize it and it'll allow it to stay up and keep on going. That's pretty badass. Plus, on top of all of that, as you're noticing with some of the images, there's custom backgrounds on it. So you can actually... Um, I was 3D... reading somewhere you can print your own yeah, covers. you can 3D print your own covers for the modules. So that's actually an extra, you know, bit of uh, uh, customization a lot of people are looking for. Uh, for example, like the, the, the Moto X, when that came out, it came out with... with dozens and dozens and dozens of, of customizable 
um, face plates and uh, rear plates and whatnot. And a lot of people got it for that. And even the internals were not, you know, bleeding edge, but they're still amazing uh, by themselves. I'm sure that helped out its sales. So, Michael, would you be picking one of these up? <laughs> I'd consider it. Um, I'm actually quite happy with the one I've got. Mm -hmm. I, I want to see more usability studies. I want to see – not usability studies. I want to see it actually in use. Yes. I want to see how it holds up. Um, how stable are those? I mean, yeah, okay, they're held in place with magnets. Great. How hard is it to jar one of those loose? True. Um, you know, stuff like that. Is, is there, you know, is there, are they going to make a little clippy thing so that you can put them in there? And if you wanted to put like this little band around the edge to hold everything in place, just to be sure, can you do that? Stuff like that. Yeah, I can see um, that. I find it, I, originally I was like, when you were telling me they were putting it in Puerto Rico, I'm like, well, why the hell are they going into Puerto Rico? And I'm still kind of, why the hell are they picking Puerto <laughs> Rico instead of, but originally I was like, why Puerto Rico instead of, say, the Bay Area, which is where they're from. But mm -hmm. at the same time, that kind of makes sense because the Bay Area, Silicon Valley, you see new crap pop up there all the time. Exactly. Everybody tries crap there. So so doing it in a non-standard test market makes sense. I just don't know why the hell they picked Puerto Rico. Pick Ventura. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? But, yeah, I would love to pick one of these up. I mean, I'll probably still keep my iPhone whenever I have that. But I may, if it's for, for a low enough price where I don't need to pick up like a 3G van where I can just pick up for like a Wi-Fi antenna on it, I'd mm -hmm. pick it up just to mess around with it at home, just to, just to play around with it. Well, exactly. I mean, and, and the idea of what you can do with these things, I, I want to know what those, and it would be funny is I could see the uh, the carriers, not that they're going to want to do this, but the carriers could do it to where, you know, you, you're on T-Mobile this one, now I want to call and now I'm on a Verizon unit. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't be surprised you could do the something The possibilities like that. there. I don't know that they'll do it, but... They have to do something in there. So, I mean, yeah. what's stopping you from having multiple antennas in this thing? Multiple antenna modules. Or, yeah. or slapping in a module that is an antenna. Yeah. I'm just waiting for the day that when this comes out, fairly shortly after, I'm sure we'll find someone who will hook this up to, like, a Raspberry Pi board and just make this, like, some ridiculous Uber, you know, device. War dialer? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. Like the old school war? Oh, speaking of war dialing, oh, tangent hop. Go for it. Something I never thought I would encounter ever again happened to me the other day. <coughs> What's up? I was calling a friend up in the Bay Area uh, for, for something, and... I had transposed one digit accidentally hmm. and it picked it up and I hear the beep beep. And I'm like, Oh great. It's a freaking fax machine. Then I heard the beep. I'm like, wait a minute. This is a modem. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody still has a modem running. <laughs> That's crazy. I was like, I kind of want to call this back just <laughs> with a modem to see what's there. <laughs> Just mess with it, see what happens, you know? I, I kind of want, you know, it's like, shall we play a game? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go from, from chess to thermal nuclear war. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, speaking with the tech stuff for a, a moment, I know I talked about this on Anna Break a while back, of a Nintendo's new, as they're calling new, uh, Nintendo 3DS handheld, mm -hmm. and uh, associating with the 3DS XL handheld. Well, they finally made the announcement that it is coming stateside, uh, February 13th. You can pre-order it right now. Uh, aside with a bunch of tweaks on the inside, fa um, faster processor, uh, better screens, it can, can um, track uh, face track a lot better so your 3D is a lot more immersive. Um, no, no more trying to find that sweet spot. It'll find it for you kind of thing for nice. the, the 3D. Um, this is cool that it's coming out, but there's a couple caveats here. Um, first off, it is not coming with an AC adapter uh, included with it. Nintendo America claims that the target demographic for this are people who already own a 3DS and just want to upgrade. So there's no need for someone to bundle in a, a, an AC adapter. Now, Nintendo's always been great about re, uh, reusing uh, cables and products from previous generations. I mean, hell, they use the same um, uh, video cable for I forget how many generations of consoles. Um... But you can buy one separately for like 10 bucks if you really wanted to pick one up. The other thing is that the smaller version is not going to be available at all here in the States. And it had a nice feature where the, the backplate was actually 
swappable for you know custom designs. The 3DS XL doesn't have that. No, but there's going to be skins for it. There has to be some sort of skins that you can actually buy third party and whatnot. Um, even with this, all all this aside, it is going to be two hundred dollars, and from all accounts that I've read online, it is totally worth it. Now, I know a lot of people were looking at this, going, "Okay, this is kind of cool and all, but I need to. I think I'm going to hold off because I want, um, you know, a Zelda themed one because they had one for." Uh, Nintendo DS, the DSi, um, the 3DS. It, it looked really sweet, those. Well, yeah, I thought I was going to have to wait a little longer. No, they already announced the, the Zelda one. This is the Majora's Mask Edition, and it nice. actually looks really sexy. I look at this, and I'm like, God, I want. And the thing is, you, you can pre-order this one right now. I like the fact that the top screen's bigger than the lower screen. Yes. And that's, and, and that's uh, wrong picture. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I don't have an X, a 3D X mm-hmm. or 3DS yet mm-hmm. uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, there's nothing really. Nothing you can think of that you can. Uh, you Am I muted or unmuted? You're unmuted. Okay. Sorry. The, fo- the switch went weird. Mm. There's nothing really in the 3D realm that screams for my attention. Um, I mean, I like the whole idea of the 3D camera and whatnot, but right. I've, I've been tossing around in my head, you know, do I want to get a handheld? I don't play on my PS... the hell was that? I don't play on my PSP as much as I used to, mm-hmm. um, I've been t- but I've been bouncing around between my head. Do I want the XL? or Because I, 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 I thought it had already come out. I didn't realize it hadn't come out yet. Right. Um, do I want the XL or do I want to go with the Vita, which is where I've actually been leaning? I understand you're 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 on the fence. I've been on the fence for this. How's the background? Th- how's the back? Uh, the backwards compatibility on it? You could still play all um, uh, 3DS and I think uh, DS titles as well. Yes. Um, yeah, it's a uh, 3DS and DSi stuff. So I mean, you still have that option. You can back with, uh, you can play a lot of those old great games. Uh, they have the e store, which can play a lot of the old school stuff that you, you <laughs> want to have a nostalgia trip. You can go down that path. It can be used. What's the? Go for Sorry, it. go ahead. Uh, it can be used as um, as a controller for uh, some. Uh, yeah, Wii U for games. some of your if you if you have the Wii U, yeah. Yeah. So the, I mean, I'm definitely leaning more towards a 3DS than a PS Vita if I was, had to pick one up right now. Um, that being said, I'm still looking forward to actually picking up a, a, a Wii U before I pick up anything else. So, but then the I'm, Zelda stuff I'm, came out. I'm actually, I, there's nothing on the Wii U that screams for my attention. Uh, it's, it's right now the one that I'm, you know, call me a brand whore if you will, but I'm Sony. I'm not, there's nothing on the X bone that screams for me. Mm-hmm. Wii U, the, the, the funky controller, cool though it may be is a gimmick in my mind at okay. this point. Um, the PS4 has got what I want. Um, and, and, the, and the game, most of the game series that I'm really into are going to be hitting PS4. Mm-hmm. So, mm, I don't know. The thing with the three, uh, the, the XL is, <coughs> I don't know. It, how much are they asking for the Majora's Mask version? Have they announced it? Um, I believe the pre-order is... It's a little over 200 The base model is 200 bucks for it. So someone in the chat will probably let us know. And That's you can pre-order it right now. So so it's something to think about. But um, it's just one of those, you know, another bit of, do you want to spend more money right now? It's yeah, one of those, tell me about it. Whether it's uh, video game consoles, uh, handhelds, or, or just PC tech, you literally have to find... Or for yourself, draw a line in the sand and say, this is what I'm going to buy at the latest at this level. Because if you try <laughs> to keep on saying, oh, I'll wait till the next stuff, oh, I'll wait till the next stuff, you're never going to get anything. Well, yeah, I know. Uh, but there's again, there's there's nothing compelling for me on it. Okay. Then fair enough. I mean, for me, uh, there's actually several titles on the 3DS that I really want to play. The same token, there's a, only a couple things on the PS Vita that I really want to play 
but the quality of those games in terms of the, the production values is so much higher than what you can get on a 3DS. So. Well, that that coupled with the, the 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 Vita is trying very hard to be its own basically tablet. Right. Um, you know, so there, there's a lot of functionality in the in non-game related. There's a lot of functionality in the Vita that isn't in the 3DS. That is very and, true. And there's some stuff that's in 3DS that isn't in the Vita, right. not counting just the 3D. Mm-hmm. So it's a trade-off. What do you like more? I- exactly. So, But that's pretty much all we can say on this. We're not trying to sway you one way or the other. It's just, hey, look, new stuff came out. Do you want to get it or not? <laughs> yes, I do actually want to get it. But... Uh, shall we jump back over to the Oscars? Oh, shall we talk about the movie that got snubbed? Which I laughed my ass off at. What the F? <laughs> I mean, okay. I mean, admittedly, I've seen it. I finally saw it. I wasn't... It was fun. It was cute. But I wasn't that impressed. I was impressed with the with the with with how they had done the graphics with it. But mm-hmm. how the hell is it that they completely snubbed Lego Movie? I don't expect Best Picture. I don't expect Best Story. I don't expect Best Acting. On an animation side, though, it did some pretty impressive stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it didn't completely stump. It got a knob for uh, Best Original Song. <laughs> best Evil Earworm? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's oh, That song drives me insane. Everything is awesome. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say that's... For me, that was the biggest surprise that it wasn't in there at all. Even though, considering, I mean, let me pull up real quick. The uh, where's it at? Best animated feature. We have uh, the tale of uh, the Princess Kaguya. That got again. I'm I'm happy for that. Ghibli got another nod. Uh, Song of the Sea. I've never heard of before. Um, Some of these movies haven't even come out yet. Yeah, that's the weird thing. I hate the fact that a lot of these um, re- these production companies are able to. Do, do a limited release of like three theaters for like 10 showings in the, just at the end, just enough to make the nomination. Exactly. And I'm like, well, it's like American sniper. American sniper got, got some nominations. They may well, they may be deserved, but American sniper didn't come out till this weekend. Yeah, exactly. I, uh, I hate when people do that. When they will, it's not, and the thing is, it's not uncommon, unfortunately. No, no, it's not. I mean, Studio G Kids did a lot of that. They made the announcement they were going to do stuff like this in order to get these Ghibli films uh, in the ability to be nominated for an, for an Oscar. Um, what else? They had a how you how to train your dragon two. To be honest, I haven't even seen the first one, so I can't say if this would be except it needed or not. Um, I will give props to the box trolls um, because that one just bringing back the you know the the um, stop motion animation that actually is always a, a great art to see um, and of course Big Hero 6 so Big Hero 6 deserves it I think Big, Big Hero 6 definitely deserves this one uh, I do have to say <coughs> there is something that's going to show up in the uh, the documentary feature best documentary that I curious to see if it actually will win and if it does what will happen because of that? And I'm talking about Citizen Four, which is actually the um, the documentary uh, by Laura uh, Poitras uh, with her interview and meeting up with Edward Snowden. So I'm wondering if that one, because I've seen the trailers for it and we've talked about it a couple times, it, it looks interesting. I want to go see it. Yeah. But the fact that I got nominated for best documentary, what is that going to say if it wins? Well, it is. It is. It is a documentary. I mean, yeah. it's it's it, it's a legitimate documentary. It's whether or not it warrants Oscar nods is a whole other kettle of fish. But mm. uh, yeah, well, we'll have to see. Um, I don't think we really need to talk about director, actor, actress. We we can ignore probably most of that i do want to get your thought process uh, thoughts on why they decided to expand the number of um titles giving the nomination for best motion picture because it used to be just five now we have eight do we need more do we need less i mean there's a lot of uh, while there's a lot of crap where hollywood has lost its damn mind (laughs) 
this was a good year for movies. There was a lot of really good stuff that came out. Um, <coughs> you know, Imitation Game. Mm -hmm. I have to admit, I haven't seen it. I've only seen parts of it. But I've done some research on the storyline and the actor and everything else. It's supposed to be a phenomenal movie, and it's a story that needs to be told. Mm -hmm. um, American Sniper, another one that, you know a story that needed to be told, but we've had a lot of movies this last year that were higher than usual mm -hmm. as far as quality. We also had a lot of crap like let's be cops. I mean, <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, you know, it, it's, it, but it was a better year for, for Hollywood. Now that being said, honestly, I think it was just ticket sales. You think so? I think I think it's a push for ticket sales. Okay. It's, it's by getting eight movies nominated, that's eight more movies that, you have to that go can out be said see. we're Oscar nominated. You have to go see us. Yeah, and there's stuff in here that I have no intention of seeing. Like the 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 ones getting the most buzz right now is this Boyhood movie, the one where the one that took twelve years to make. Exactly, and it's being nominated, and it's already won a few uh, awards. I think solely on the fact of the feat uh, uh, that the, they did it over twelve the, years with the all the same actors, and nobody it. died. Exactly. Yeah, but I'm like, it's a boy growing up, and I'm well, sure but, the acting's I mean, great and whatnot. But there's really nothing here that really, for me, says uh, the I need concept to see this of what it is is impressive, though. Mm -hmm. I mean that that they dedicated 12 years of their life, plus because you have pre-production and post, right, to make this. That in and of itself is worthy of at least attention. Mm -hmm. Whether the movie's any good or not. I don't know. It could be the next Arthur for all I know, yeah. but it it's <laughs> it's something that you don't see very often in Hollywood these days, right. and that is unique. This is true. Uh, one so, one movie that I'm surprised I, I I don't think it got a nod. I may be wrong. Was the um, oh got it Life After Pie? I don't think it did. No, it did that's. Not. A movie that I honestly think should get at least nominated, even though even if it if it nobody knows it's going to win, right? Bec but but again, I can understand why it didn't because Hollywood is not going to cast a mirror on itself. No, no. For it's those not. of you who don't know what Life After Pie is, Life After Pie is a documentary of the, for lack of a better term, the death of Rhythm and Hughes. Rhythm and Hughes was one of the classic pioneers in computer generated imagery. They were one of the they were one of the first six to actually make it big um, back in the early eighties. Uh, and we're going through up until um, the movie Life of Pi, which had fantastic effects, but there were various things and it undermine it underscored a lot of shady practices that Hollywood does. Um, that caused these studios to lose grip tons of money. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a documentary on what happened, <laughs> how it happened, and you know, basically chronicling the death of one of the original pioneers in that field. I am not surprised it didn't get one, but I wish that it would have. Mm-hmm. Because I think it deserves it. It does definitely deserve it, but of course these uh, um, these companies that actually produce these awards, they don't want to have any more of the, that controversy in there. They may, they may talk about controversy or that they want like you know first nominated African American actress or or for this or first uh, they don't want to do with like race or creed or something like that. They never want to look at the. They never want to look at the hard stuff of themselves. They don't want to look in the mirror is what it boils down to. Exactly. So, I mean, when you get stuff like, um, you know, Boyhood, Whiplash, American Sniper, it's like, okay, you're going to focus on, you know, stuff that's nowhere near. American Sniper, though, I, I mean, that's one I definitely, that one and Imitation Game are two that I genuinely agree with hardcore, even though I haven't seen the films. I will say Imitation Game does deserve it. Um, I know a lot of people are claiming Selma, but I have no interest in seeing that. Um, the Theory of Everything is um, 
Where's my people? Guardians of the Galaxy, motherfuckers? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Grand, Grand Budapest Hotel, another one. Loved, totally loved, deserves loved it. that movie. And apparently, right now, even though it's sold out on Amazon, you can still buy it and still lock in the price. It's on a sale right now on Blu-ray for six bucks. So yeah, you should go jump in on that, dude. Um, the last one, which I think will most like, what I'm hoping to win, would actually probably be Birdman. I've heard a lot about Birdman. I'm curious about it. It, from what a lot of people have been saying that this is this is the one that's gonna make that's gonna bring Keaton back into the spotlight, which would be amazing. Which would be amazing because he's a great actor, mm -hmm. um, comedic and otherwise. I haven't seen it. I, I I want to see it. I'm curious about it. But it kind of like it came with silence. I mean, I heard about it for a while. Then there was nothing. Then all of a sudden, it's 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 leaving theaters. I'm like, well, I didn't even know it had come into theaters yet. <laughs> yeah, good point. That was what I wanted to see. Well, let's see. Oh, there. Okay, there we go. Achievement in visual effects. We have Captain America: The Winter Soldier. We have Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Guardians of the Galaxy, Interstellar, and X Men: Days of Future's Past. That's pretty much a toss up. Mm -mm. You you think there's um, a standout in this one? Well, okay. So it was it was Winter Soldier. Why is that even in there? Because uh, there, uh, I mean, I, having seen the movie, there. I mean, they didn't do anything original in that one that I saw. Okay. Um, let's see. Planet of the Apes. That one. Definitely okay. That makes sense because of of the uh, the the performance capture, mm -hmm. which is by the way the new name for mocap. Uh, just keep it at what it is. It's mocap. No, well, because know. now they're because it's more than just the uh, mocap. Used to be just the motion. Now it's actually capturing you know facial expressions and everything. So it's now performance capture, which makes sense. Mm. I, there's logic. I get this one. I, okay, there's this, logic this fights behind to that. Fight, I'm not going to fight that one. <sighs> I'm just um, waiting to but, see but that. So you know, Planet of the Apes, that one makes sense because of the amount of performance capture that's in it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's right up there with with uh, Avatar okay. in that regard. Um, although Avatar blew it out of the water, hmm. <sighs> as far as quality. Um, what were the other ones? Uh, see, Captain America, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay, it was a sci-fi movie. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong; I love the movie. I I genuinely loved. What is that damn sound? What sound? There's something that keeps popping in. Um, I loved I loved Guardians of the Galaxy, and I I. I Thought that their work, although it could probably because of Groot and Rocket, mm -hmm. are probably the main part of it. Uh, eh, maybe. Um, let's see the other ones. Donald uh, uh, X, X Men: Days of Futures Past, which again was there really anything original in that one? You, well, there were some very complex scenes in it. Did you see it? Yes, I did. Okay, the scenes with all the teleporting in the combat sections. Yes. That was some pretty complex compositing there. Mm -hmm. There was that coupled with a lot of the virtual set stuff that was done really well. So that one I could I, I could see that one making. I could see that one doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm still pissed off that Lego movie didn't get animated. I mean, <laughs> uh, just because it was it was a unique thing. And, it was and you don't see that thing. often. Yes. Um the last one being Interstellar. Which haven't seen it. Um, given the everything that happened in the third act of it, oh, you saw it? Yes, it is. Was it another one of those aliens or goddamn father movies? <laughs> no, so, okay, no, it, I, I will say firmly no. How they get around to explaining it though, visually, that was very, very pretty. So, okay, they. I know that they had this huge article on Wired um, before the movie came out about how they actually uh, were trying to figure out new ways of showing on film what a black hole looks like. And going through these new mathematical Oh, is that what it is? Whatnot, okay. At, at that point, they realized, no, this is a completely, this is the most you know, semi-realistic way you can actually view 
uh, a black hole. And there was actually a couple scientific papers released with this information. I'm like, how do you, yeah, how do you view something that that light cannot escape from? I mean, it's literally a black hole. Exactly. So I, I actually want to find these papers and um, where they were published at and see if I can actually look into that because that stuff fascinates me when they can figure out stuff like this. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. That was pretty much, I mean, everything else is screenplay, sound mixing, live action short film, animated short film. I'm sure Feast will win that one because that was adorable. But other than that, there was really not much else to talk about in Oscar knobs. I mean, do you have anything else to add on in terms of Oscars? or? Uh, I'll be honest. Um, I didn't pay a hell of a lot of attention to it. I know, bad host, but or bad co-host, yeah. but... I was too busy to being distracted with other things. Like I just started a programming class, so fun. Yes. Yes, Python. Mm, Ooh. Yummy. <laughs> Wix is not like you know C C plus plus. We were like, why won't my link, link my link list not work together? Oh wait, that's why. Click. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Um. Well, let's talk about this then, Michael. What have you been watching? Really, we're jumping. We're we're that far along we're already. Almost at the hour mark. Holy crap. <laughs> Time flies. Um, what have I been watching? A lot of video lectures for my programming class. <laughs> um, no. Fascinating. Um, no. Not a lot. There hasn't been a lot I've been watching. I mean, the I'm keeping up with Agent Carter. Mm-hmm. I, I've been enjoying that. Um, not really... Haven't been watching much else this week. No, no, no worries at all. We all have slow weeks and days and whatnot. I know I do a lot of times. It's like, what did I watch? Um, something I watched in the last twenty minutes, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what have I been watching? A lot of ins- a lot of boot screens, a lot of install screens. <laughs> um, I have a lot of. What do you mean, var string doesn't work? <laughs> um. For me, again, you know me watching uh, a lot of the new winter uh, anime season. I do have to say, though, that Sailor Moon Crystal is starting to waver a bit. I mean, yes, it's following the manga pretty well. It's, it's still pretty enjoyable to watch. The main problem it has right now is its pacing. It's starting to become like Dragon Ball Z. Where it's like, you saw this is going to happen. What's going to happen in the next episode? The next episode, nothing is resolved. You just have to wait till the, the following episode. I'm like, really? Do we need fluff in the 12th episode of a series? I don't know. It's not like they're waiting on the manga. Yeah, exactly. Not around this time. Since we don't have a lot that we've been watching, unless you have more you want to say, I do have one. There it is again. Mm-hmm. Some weird sound. Anyway, a mm-hmm. um, couple things in the comic world. Go for it. We haven't done comics in a while. The new Marvel Star Wars series started this week. And I'm looking forward I'm pretty to sure that. this is the non variation cover or non variant cover here. Mm-hmm. That yeah, that's... I have I haven't read it yet. I just picked it up today. Okay. But I was kind of I, I let my inner geek flag fly and bought some of the variant covers, including that one. <laughs> <laughs> Reminiscent of all the uh, the old action figure, uh, uh, the stuff. movie cover. There you go. Is that a, a, a screen cap of it, or is that actually? It's a modified screen cap. Yeah. Okay. And they always do a Scotty Robbins <laughs> cover. <laughs> there we go. That's so. Funny. I picked those up. Um, other new series that started this week. Um, is the new Mortal Kombat series started this week. I didn't even know there was a Mortal Kombat uh, series. Really? Oops, wait a minute. We'll put that one there. Mortal Kombat and... X, huh? Scorpions. Interlocking covers. Okay, that's actually a nice feature there. And that's now, uh, issue one? The thing or... with the variants, though, these things are selling out like no tomorrow. Really? Nikki had to beg... To get these set aside. They mm. sold out that fast. Wow. Um, also, for the first time in five years, probably because of the stupid movie coming out, eventually, after over a year hiatus, Jupiter's Legacy number five is out. What? Over a year. Wh- why, was it, why was such a, l- a long delay on that? I don't know. Uh, I, I 
haven't gotten an answer on that question yet. I will try to get an answer and hopefully let you know next week. Okay. Um, and lastly, this uh, the graphic novel, the, the the comics when this series came out on the individual issues sold like like mad. Um, the graphic novel is now out for the Wicked and the Divine. Um, basically, the concept of this is pop stars are gods, okay. literally. Um, uh, the, the way they describe it on the back is every 90 years, 12 gods return as young people. They are loved. They are hated. In two years, they are all dead. It's happening now. It's happening again. And Oh, God, they predicted the rise of Miku. <laughs> <laughs> one guy looks kind of like David Bowie. Um, you know, Lucifer's in here. It there's some. It looks really cool. I haven't I haven't read all the way through it yet. Okay. Um, but when this thing came out, if if you haven't caught if you didn't catch the series before, all the recommendations are you need to read this book, and I will let you know by next week if you definitely need to read this book or not. Awesome. Definitely let us know. So there's some stuff interesting stuff happening in the comic world. Also, I think I told you this before, or if I didn't, um, at the new, uh, the first graphic novel of Alex and Ada is out. This, they've mm. had several episodes since then, so the second Alex and Ada book should be coming out soon. Very sweet. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I was it's my beeper god, god of douche. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. I'm so far behind in my comic reading, I need to... Go my lo- you need to get shop. your butt up here and read the ones we have sent for do, you. I do. I do. At this point, it's almost going to be like an entire week just to catch up on everything. <laughs> yeah. Entirely possible. Yeah. Entirely possible. Very true. <laughs> All right, my friend. Well, is there anything else we should add to this episode? I think it's... uh fairly wrapped up nicely. I think we uh, put it all together in a nice, tight package. As best we can do with as our all our As best we could for us. <laughs> it's far more, far more uh, clean than we usually, or clearer than we usually are. I mean, holy crap, we're actually coming in at an hour. What the hell? Don't expect this in the future, folks. Yeah, yeah, don't expect. <laughs> yeah. This is a fluke. It's a one-off. We're not that good. <laughs> it's, beca- it's because I'm sick, folks. That's why. Oh, oh also, I need a, uh, well, we'll talk about it in post-show. So. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Stay tuned for post show. And yeah, for From My Mother's Basement, I'm Jason. And I am Michael. And we will see you guys next week. Take it easy, everybody.